Very true. But my point still taken. Being second, nah, not, not quite so memorable. So, and the kind of things I'm talking about too, uh, now from an academic sense and also the production side, it's not all, not all about the entertainment side of this stuff. We do, it used to be called edutainment. I hate that word, it's very dated, it's very 90s. Uh, but basically using, using this technology as, uh, as an educational component. Um, military simulation and training, uh, remote medical, this stuff is particularly fascinating, using all this technology so that Doctors in the United States uh, can literally be operating on and diagnosing soldiers in the field in Afghanistan, for instance, or anywhere. Um, energy, serious gaming, what we call that, rehabilitation. Again, most of you probably know all of this stuff in great detail. Simulation and training for other for uh, first responders. Uh, yeah, again, health, rehabilitation. So, and part of this revolution is what we're calling gamification. Has anyone heard that term? I've already started to kind of hate that term too, just like as you can. Um, but yeah, gamification. Basically, it's this. It's the whole. It kind of encompasses down into this um, uh, badging thing. So anything. For instance, my wife knows I'm a, I'm a nut about TripAdvisor. So whenever I go to a new place in the world, I have to look up you know the best hotel, and the best restaurants, the best places to hang out. Uh, and all those best things are ranked by people like me who blog in a lot and write reviews. Well, they make it a game by incentivizing these people to come on more and say, you get an email that says, oh, if you only write five more reviews, you'll get a silver star badge with a gold border. And you're gonna get, ooh, that's gonna be you know, more exciting for people. Come on and read my reviews. So this whole badging and this gamification thing. And your bank account, your online banking system does this now. It's just it's completely pervasive and totally revolutionary. Um, so all encompassing. I tried to think of one thing, one thing only in the entire world that might not be touched by this revolution of gamification. I thought of maybe juggling. Maybe juggling is not. But I was wrong. Has anyone ever seen the uh, Flying Caramazzo Brothers? Oh, you got it. This, especially this crowd, you got to see the Flying Caramazzo Brothers. They just finished the world tour. But uh, insanely creative people. Juggling does take advantage of the creative aspects as well. So, but the thing about being revolutionary is not everybody's going to love your idea, right? That means you're doing something radically different. <laughs> you're breaking down walls. This is an, another metaphor here. Um, so, one thing that I, I tend to operate by uh, occasionally, not too often, is asking uh, forgiveness rather than permission. That works, but don't do it too often. And uh, the other thing about being a successful revolutionary in academics and teaching is, uh, anyone know the golden rule? My golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. So it's easy to call the shots and be successful if you control your own success, your, your money stream, basically. So that's all about re being revolutionary. The second part of all of this, of being a success in creative industries, is excellence. Now, you say, wait, but Terrence, doesn't it? everybody want to be excellent? Right? That's, that's what we're all being. Um, but my challenge to my students and to everyone else will be to, to redefine what that word means. It exists because most of everything else, I find, stands out. Um, and my job now as a teacher, as well as a producer, is to point that out and to make that difference distinct. So, point of example, talking about excellence, um, when we produced the 2006 Computer Animation Festival at SIGGRAPH, uh, for those of you who are familiar, it's the world's standard of excellence in computer animated film. So we had roughly about a thousand entries, except roughly about 90 of them, and it's just the best of the best of student work, production researchers, um, artists, all over the world. And this gentleman from Boston, coincidentally, submitted his work to the Cigarette Animation Festival, thinking it worthy of 
being included. So he was covering, covering the crazy. <laughs> but I actually, he was very nice. I actually, I, I contacted him and I asked his permission to use his footage, which I can't play, but that might not be a bad thing. <laughs> um, but best to talk to him about uh, this, this uh, disconnect of, uh, of uh, expectation of what excellence actually is to him. This was his most excellent work that he, he ever produced. And uh, he realized that he could make it better. He just wanted to you know, step up and be part of a larger crowd. But it was a, quite a dramatic example. Not everybody has the same understanding of what excellence really is. Um, and my wife will be glad to see the slide. She's directing the short film. She has a great producer. Okay. <laughs> get it finished. Uh, but just, just one of our projects that we're working on at Northeastern University as a short animated film. Um, and I think driving towards new levels of, uh, of excellence for our students. And I'd like to tell a story here about uh, has everyone at home seen Randy Pausch's last lecture at Carnegie Mellon? Well, I hope you take notes. It's another one you absolutely have to see. It's a few items not even This is really a, uh, a very moving and kind of life changing speech. Randy Pouch co founded uh, Carnegie Mellon's Electro uh, Entertainment Technology Center, the ETC, um, with uh, Don Marinelli uh, maybe 10 years ago or so now. Um, and they had a, a tradition at Carnegie Mellon to give, uh, have, have professors who were retiring or moving on or, or give their last lecture. So they had this last lecture series. Well, in Randy's case, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with a very severe terminal case of cancer. So this was truly going to be his last lecture. And you can find this online. I highly recommend it. But the point of the story here, relative to excellence, is that Randy, during his last lecture, related um, when he was a brand new professor at Carnegie Mellon. And this is all very new to him. And those of you shows up to the first day of class with, with the whole semester's worth of assignments and gives them to his students, comes back the next week, and they have the work done. And not only is it done, but it's done to such a level that he's speechless. He cannot believe the unbelievable work that these students have produced for him under his direction and the whole semester's work in a week. <laughs> so. So he's completely lost. He's, totally, he's a brand new professor, totally flummoxed, doesn't know what to do. Uh, so as a reaction, he goes to his mentor, um, uh, Andy Van Dam at uh, Brown University, godfather of computer graphics. Uh, and he goes to him and says, uh, you know, Andy, he's, you know, PhD advisor, I don't know what to do. He tells him the situation, so Andy thinks about it for a second, and he says, so your student showed up, did all this work, it's the best you've ever seen. What you do is you go back to the, your class, the second class, go back and look them straight in the eye and say, that's pretty good, but I know you can do better. And to me, and he did, he went back and guess what they did? They, they broke that ceiling, they broke it again, and broke it again, and they kept doing better and better, raising their own expectations of what excellence was. And that was, to me, that was a really dramatic story. That worked for him, and it worked for me. So that's what we're doing at Northeastern now, is producing short films. I'm a, a real nut about uh, information visualization and clearly illustrating data in a very creative, artistic way, some of the other projects we're doing. Um, and now, of course, everything's on mobile, everything's on the web, everything's all linked in together with um, GPS, and it's very satisfying. So this kind of revolutionary excellence pushing it towards, towards my students is, is really, really working a lot. Um, you can see this is our, how we practice gameplay mechanics. Literally, pencil and paper and dice. Very, very traditional techniques. Um, I do have the iPad at the ready. So. But the other thing about achieving excellence and being revolutionary and getting past those walls is thing about what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, you know that phrase? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Remember, it almost kills you. So the challenge in the classroom is to 
push students to not be afraid to fail while not actually letting them fail. Does that make sense? So that's my big challenge. So that's all about excellence and students. And all of our the environment that we do this in is all collaborative. So it's all team-based, interdisciplinary collaboration. So finally, agility. Um, all that's great, but everyone who's in academic sport production now knows that you have to be agile. Things are changing so fast. You have to be ready to make changes, make them any time, you don't know what they are ahead of time. So you have to build your work, whether it's your code, your animation, your art, anything. You have to be able to change at a minute's notice. Um, and um, a story I like to tell about being quick on your feet is, uh, outside of the classroom and the technology, I like to go hiking with friends out in the woods. I like to be outside. And uh, I always tell my hiking buddies that if ever we're out and we run into this, I don't have to run faster than the bear. I just have to run faster than you. <laughs> so you have, have to be quick in your feet. So, right, team-based interdisciplinary Creative industries. It's all about agility. Um, we work, if you remember the slides from before, working across colleges, across departments. And uh, I'm just full of metaphors today. But especially for you fellow academics, making revolutionary changes and, and you know trying to be agile within an academic environment, especially, it's like I, I feel like a tugboat sometimes, trying to trying to steer a super tanker around a, a hairpin turn. So it's uh, it's not easy. But, uh, but being open-minded and agile about situations that are presented to you and, and people that you might come across. Um, we couldn't hire this guy at Northeastern now because he doesn't have a terminal degree. But, you know, who would have thought that with, not even with BS, you can change great things. So agility. Remember, the only, the only thing that's 100% guaranteed is that change will happen. Um, so great administration is bringing that all together. I'll wrap this up a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, about, about being agile, all this, the production things, who would have, if I gave this talk two or three years ago, it would, would have been all about uh, gaming consoles, a little bit of web online, traditional PC development. No one could have foreseen the whole rise of social media and mobile development. Uh, it's very, very significant. So hopefully you can follow up and stay in touch. I'm going to wrap up with my, my secret pretty soon. But uh, this is our main website. If you're interested in creative industries at Northeastern University specifically, it's really interesting. Main website slash CI for creative industries. Follow up, please. And now, so this was all very kind of prophetic for me. And uh, I also like to tell the students too, it takes just as much, if you put just as much effort into something uh, small, might as well do something big, think big, right? Have, have very large horizons. So by thinking about all this, it made me, I'm, I'm a nut about history, I'm, I'm very appreciative of, of, and love being in Istanbul, of all places doing this, talk about history, 3,000 3, years. 